Hello and welcome to MTM Vegas. I'm Sean Kumi, your host, joined by Mark Osterman, my managing editor, and we have a great show for you today. I did want to start with some housekeeping. I recorded this episode while I was staying at the Rio this week, and I had two microphone failures, so I was on my third microphone option. The sound isn't nearly as good as it usually is, and I sincerely apologize about that. Did my best to clean it up, but we have some great footage throughout the video, so check that out. And we're gonna talk all about my Rio stay and why I almost walked out, plus some dining news, including an Olive Garden coming to the Vegas Strip, pod dining, and a $10,000 treasure hunt that ended in Las Vegas. Some very interesting stuff coming up. If you like the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps us out a lot. Hit the subscribe button and definitely thumbs up this video. And most importantly, leave a comment discuss any of these topics, my stay at the Rio, any of the news stories we cover. We want to hear what you have to say. Leave a comment and we'll have the discussion there. Thanks so much for listening, for watching. Let's hit it. So Mark, I'm uh, here, not in my studio, not with the usual backdrop of fire and Christmas trees, but uh, with the Las Vegas Strip kind of behind me, a uh, hard to see nonetheless right now, but the sun is going down and I'm at the Rio. The Rio's reopened today as we record this. It's been closed since March and I had been looking forward to this day, but it didn't start out uh, too, too good. But yeah, I'm sitting 16 stories above Las Vegas right now. Are you jealous? Uh, I mean, that Holiday Inn decorum behind you <laughs> really is making me jealous. <laughs> Circa 1998. Yeah, so it is very circa 1998 for sure. Uh, of course, I knew that going in. And for people who uh, don't follow the channel, I actually posted this in the channel, but I got this suite for $69 essentially at the Rio for opening night. It's a little bit cheaper than the rack rate because I have diamond status, although it's not based on my play. I Diamond members just get a discount, and that's the discount uh, that I get because I don't gamble a lot. As I said before, Mark is the gambler of the two of us. But I booked a masquerade suite, which is in the masquerade tower. And the masquerade suite has two characteristics that I specifically booked it for. Um, first, it's 1,600 square feet. So it's pretty big. And second, it has panoramic views of the Las Vegas Strip. And that's because the masquerade tower, where it's at, the angle and everything else, gives you great end-to-end -end views of the Strip. And what I got was a much smaller suite in the old part of the tower because they decided they're not going to open up the masquerade tower because this is their first day and they don't have enough business. And that's fine, right? But what I got here, nobody told me anything and they just basically downgraded me into a much smaller suite without even saying anything about it. And that's sort of the first uh, strike here. I came and I checked in and she just pushed the buttons on her computer and then just gave me a key and sent me to my room. Now I booked and paid for the bigger suite. It's not like I was asking for an upgrade. And I've never been in a hotel where you book and pay for a room and they downgrade you without even mentioning it. I guess they're just hoping that people won't know the difference. Um, but I certainly did. And I don't know, it's a little disappointed. Would you be disappointed if you came to a room and a suite, you know, a, a suite that you booked specifically and it was a, an inferior room? Now, did you, did you like walk all the way upstairs and get and open up the room before you realized that it was not going to be a masquerade suite or did you kind of figure it out heading to the elevator? Yeah. So to back up, to be fair to them, I, I knew the masquerade suite is in the masquerade tower and I did book specifically for that. I had looked at videos and seen what the views were. But when I checked in, they said you're in the Ipanema tower and the masquerade tower is closed. And what I assumed was that I was being given an equivalent suite and Instead of trying to rock the boat, I just said, okay, and I went to the room to discover, you know, it is a suite. It's like 1,100 square feet instead of 1,600 square feet, which is certainly first world problems material. But again, I paid for a specific room, right? Uh, I paid that for a specific small, room. That was the tiniest violin I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get that. But the other problem with it and the other thing that was frustrating is the views aren't as good. I do have views of the north end of the strip, but I don't have that end-to-end -end view of the strip that you get from the Masquerade Tower. And I was really hoping that uh, I would get something equivalent. And what I got is a room that isn't, you know, isn't as nice. It's just as old. The decor is basically the same, it seems like, uh, from pictures. So it's not like it's a new, fresh room. It's smaller, but it's a, it's a clean, you know, room that was renovated a year or two ago. This room is one of their oldest rooms still. And 
uh, it does feature a living room and a, a bedroom and I'll do a full review on the channel. But yeah, I got up to the room, which of course is at the end of the hallway because the suites here are at the end of the hallways and it's a pretty long walk. So I get there and I see that it's this room and then I go back downstairs and I get to the front desk and I actually overhear two people checking in who are upset because they booked the same suite I did and they uh, apparently at check-in they got told that they were being downgraded unlike me and they were fighting with the uh, front desk manager there so I thought oh great this is going to be be fun but I went right back up to the lady who checked me in and I uh, asked her about it she went to the back disappeared to the back then the supervisor comes out and he explains oh the the tower is closed okay that's th that makes sense and he offers me a $25 food and beverage credit but then he makes it seem like as if I'm getting moved to a different room. But no, he's just, he said, you know, he said, we're, we have you in the equivalent room. And this is just not an equivalent room. I'm sorry. It's not an equivalent room. But the kicker to this all, Mark, is they're still selling these rooms. Like I went to the website and I could book that masquerade suite right now for tonight, still to this minute. And so they're basically trying to trick their customers, sell one thing, give them another, hope they don't notice. And that's really the problem. That's really what upset me. And there's just no excuse for it. The The manager who eventually came out made the excuse that they only made the decision a couple of days ago to stop, to not open that tower, which I don't believe for one second at all, because most of these casinos have not been opening towers. So uh, whether they did that or not, there was no excuse for them to still be booking it. You can book that room for today, for tomorrow, for the rest of the week, for the rest of the month, next year. You can book that room anytime. The tower won't be open, but they will sell you a room that doesn't exist. And uh, that's unfortunate. That is, that is kind of like Caesars per usual during the pandemic, though. I mean, you think about it like they let you book into all these hotels that weren't open and then move you last minute. Now, granted, most of the time they moved you to like a nicer hotel. That's how I ended up at Caesars because I was supposed to st stay at Cromwell and then they didn't open it. And they're like, hey, we're going to move you. So this is kind of like the game they play, I guess. But mm -hmm. it is weird when it's the specific hotel and they know the tower's not going to open. I mean, if they would have just sent everybody an email, even if it was, hey, we decided this two days ago, send everybody an email and say, this isn't going to be open. This is what we're doing. This is what you get. You know, we'll give you a 25 buck food and beverage. Like, if you tell somebody you're going to screw them over, usually they're way more <laughs> receptive to it versus doing it and then apologizing after. So I think if they would have been up front, everybody would have been like, okay, it's COVID. Vegas is hurting. I get it. And they gave me something for it. So I'm okay with that. Or like matching to the lower price, if it's a lower price, something, but yeah, you, you should just be upfront about it and it wouldn't have been a big deal. I don't think. Yeah. And, and to your point, and to be fair to me, I mean, I know that I stayed at Caesar's palace on opening night in June, having booked another hotel and getting moved there and upgraded there. And so it works both ways, but the big problem is that they're still selling these rooms. They know that they don't have them. And they know that they're unique in different rooms than they have. It's one thing to sell a standard room in the other tower, knowing that you have rooms that are above that that you can upgrade people into or or something like that. But in this case, they don't have any rooms that are equivalent. And so they're selling a room and then downgrading people. It's just, yeah, it's just not a, a good look. What happened was, so I go to the front desk and he makes it very clear. He says, well, you were, at first they offered the $25 food and beverage credit. Of course, there are, this was another joke. I think Rio has something like 12, 13, 14 restaurants, Mark, and only one of them is open. And he offered the $25 food and beverage. Is it a Starbucks? Card. Is it a well, Starbucks? Okay. okay. So, so let's, let's, I'll be clear. I don't want to get called out on this. So they have the Starbucks open. They have Smash Burger open in the Masquerade Village, and they have a restaurant, the American Grill open. So one actual sit down restaurant plus Starbucks plus Smash Burger. And there's like, you know, if you count fast food, there's probably close to 20 places to eat here. So I said that and I asked the guy how many restaurants they have and he told me they have five normally. So he lied to me there just to try to make me feel like the food and beverage credit was better. But in the end, I told him that wasn't acceptable. I almost walked out. I was ready to walk out because I was not going to pay $70 for the suite and I just don't like being lied to. The solution after I asked to speak, so I first talked to the supervisor, then the front desk manager, and I asked to speak to the operations manager or just to whoever his boss was. And that guy, his name is Chris Snow. He refused to see me, didn't come to talk to me. He was too busy. You know, they play the game where he goes to the back. He's in a meeting and all of that stuff. And yeah, so, I mean, this is what you have when you have a lower tier Caesars property. And I don't know like what the quality of the management is, but I've never heard of a manager not coming out to see a guest, a paying guest, especially, especially when you don't give them the room 
that they booked and especially when you're still booking that room. And so it just seems like a pretty dishonest management, uh, pretty rough here. And certainly my worst experience among all the seasons, this is the last pretty much uh, to stay at this year. I think I need to also stay maybe at, at Link as well, but I haven't stayed at Link this year, although I did stay there last year. But I've stayed at every other Caesars property this year, and this is definitely the worst experience. In the end, they agreed to lower the rate to $19 a night. Uh, just for the record, I could have booked a regular room for $9 for tonight. So they're not giving me anything uh, special or great. Uh, of course, the actual basic rooms have been renovated more recently than this, so probably the decor is a little bit better. But I kept the room, paying 19 They still gave me my big $25 food and beverage credit to use at Starbucks. Big winner, coming out ahead. Six no, bucks. I mean, I, th- this is the problem, <laughs> is that it seemed like I'm a loser here only because I waste time and energy. I don't care about a $25 food and beverage credit. I didn't care about, I mean, I'm glad that they lowered the rate because I want to pay for what I what I should get. But he mentioned several times my play and I'm getting the rate on play. So here they are at a casino. They're playing the game where they looked at my account and said, oh, he's not valuable enough. And this is a hotel. Like hotel managers should know better. When a customer is paying, you should take care of them. And again, this is something that was avoidable that they could have done, but they're continuing to be dishonest. And yeah, just a really frustrating experience. And I really don't know why anybody would stay here if you're a Caesars loyalist. Uh, when you look at their portfolio of properties and all of their properties on the Strip have now been renovated, the rooms here are not just one tier below what you get on the Strip, even at their lower end properties. They're two or three tiers below, I would say. This is the equivalent of, you know, like circus, circus level stuff was what I'm talking about as far as the decor and how dated it is. Now it's clean because it's been closed, so no complaints there. And the views really are good. I mean, I do have good views of the Strip, although not the panoramic views, just pretty much the north end of the, the Strip. So, you know, to be fair, I'll do a full video on it. I just don't know with, with places like Harrah's and Link going for so cheap. And even like you can go during the week at Planet Hollywood for $29. Why would you ever stay here? I mean, the rooms at all three of those are much better. Even Harrah's, even Link, um, even Flamingo, of course, uh, which I have a whole video on the channel. These places are significantly better than the Rio, and I don't know where it fits anymore, which is probably why there's been rumors that it'll be closed or, you know, the land used for a baseball stadium. Who knows how that will shake out? But yeah, not, uh, not overly impressed thus uh, far. And this is a property I have been coming to since the 90s, and I have a long history here. I do like the property, but yeah, the hotel has seen uh, better days, and I, I can't wait to show it. I'll, I'll put some video intermixed uh, throughout this video. And then I'll have my full uh, review and tour coming soon. And there's definitely some interesting parts of it to, to check out as well. But not great here at the Rio, but glad to see it open. And Caesars now has all of their properties open in Las Vegas, even if most of the towers are all closed as they uh, head into this this slow time. So you're booking, uh, you're booking Rio on your next trip, right? That is a negative. Uh, I've never stayed there, never wanted to stay there. I've only actually been there a few times. And just nothing's really inspired me to go back. The casino's okay. Um, with the Flamingo closing their Diamond Lounge to open up the restaurant, uh, it's the it's the worst Diamond Lounge in in the Caesars portfolio. So I don't really have any reason to go there. So yeah, negative. I will not be staying there. The cool <laughs> thing about the Diamond Lounge here, though, is that it's kind of got this super secret entrance through the high roller slots area, and so it makes you feel. And you got to get in an elevator to go up to another level, so you feel like you're going to a private club or something like that. And I. I do like well, that. Well, you can just go to Planet Hollywood where it's hidden in the back of a totally vacant true. second floor. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's not the same feeling as like going into the high limit no. slot area and then going in an like, elevator. You think you're going to somewhere special, but of course it's not. Yeah, Planet Hollywood, you feel, you're like, am I in the right place? I don't know what's going on here. Where, where where are we right now? And then it's actually like, I think it's my favorite of the Diamond Lounge. I mean, Caesars is the nicest Diamond Lounge by far. Um, Harrah's is really nice, but I like playing Hollywood. It's got the big screen TV. So it's got, I mean, it, it does miss the bu- having a bar there, which I do like about the other two, but I kind of like that it's hidden. Not a lot of people seem to know about it. And it does have the big screen TV if you're watching sports or something. And the food's always been good there. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the Planet Hollywood, I think that is my favorite of the Diamond Lounges as well. The Caesars one, like you said, is a little bit nicer probably as far as decor and stuff like that. But there's something about that lounge. Maybe it is because it's quieter. It has this very sort of, I don't know, old school kind of decor inside of it as well. And it's multiple rooms. I never care about sitting at the bars at the diamond lounges. So that never really was a big deal. I've always found the service to be really fast. 
So you sit down, somebody takes your order. And uh, so, yeah, that's recommended for Planet Hollywood. The one at Rio, okay, of course, it's not open uh, now. But, yeah, lots uh, to, to talk about here as far as the video goes and show you guys around. And so much is closed, and it's kind of sad um, to see. But kind of coming into this place, having not seen it for a while, I immediately understand why it's on the chopping block. I mean, I don't know that you could get this to the point where you need to for it to be able to compete with some of these other places that it has to compete with without spending uh, insane amounts of money. And uh, of course, the land is is very valuable and stuff like that. So we'll see and look for that video coming on the channel very soon. And yeah, I mean, I almost walked out. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad that uh, we were able to work it out. Although, honestly, I'm not happy. I just wanted the room that I booked or something equivalent, and they shouldn't have done that. So poor me, play my little violin, hashtag first world problems, hashtag I have perspective on this. I won't lose sleep tonight, I promise all of you. But if you are considering staying here or somewhere on the Strip, another Caesars property, I just don't know why you would ever consider uh, staying here. And that's sort of my my final take on that. Now, let's move on. We have a couple other things to ca- uh, to cover on the show, including some interesting dining news. And let's start with the pod dining downtown. Esther's Kitchen is on Main Street in the Arts District. Now, I don't think that you've ever really been to the Arts District, Mark, but I think you should go because they have tons of like breweries and uh, new kind of hip bars and things like that. And it's all been renovated, uh, that whole area. They they made some of the streets one way. They added bunches of landscaping. Very, very cool area. Have you ever been to the Arts District? It's kind of just south of downtown proper. No, I have. I mean, outside of Fremont, like I've been the north north side of Fremont. So, I've, you know, and I've done the container stores, which I, I've always been a fan of, but I've never been in the art district. And now I regret saying that because, no, it, you made it sound so cool. I want to go. Well, it's it's funny. I've been going there. There's a restaurant right around the corner from Esther's Kitchen, which has this new pod dining concept. And I'll see if I can get uh, pictures to mix in. I don't know if I have any that I can get copyright free, but if I can, I'll put them in here. But essentially, you're outside in these uh, tents out in their back parking lot, and they serve you, and they have heaters inside. So you get your own private pod to eat in, which is really cool. And it's basically near the uh, intersection of Charleston and Main Street, if you're looking for it. Right around the corner from there is a place called Casa Don Juan, which is an old school Mexican restaurant, been here forever. I've been going there since the 90s. And believe me, when when it was the 90s, there was Casa Don Juan and then a bunch of like bargain basement furniture stores around there. It was a really bad area, a really dead area. And like in the last five or 10 years, they've really revitalized it. Thankfully, Casa Don Juan hung on. So if you're ever looking for a good Mexican food downtown, that's a recommendation. But Esther's Kitchen looked really good. I drove by there. We tried to get in because you have to have a reservation these days to get in a restaurant. And we didn't. And they unfortunately didn't have the ability to give us a reservation for a time that worked for us. So I do hope to visit there and, and review it. But it looks really cool. And I have only heard good things about that restaurant. Do they do anything? Are they doing anything like that in Michigan or is it too cold? No, they do have uh, quite a few, and that and that's probably bigger here than it is in Vegas, just because, you know, most days it's probably still somewhat decent outside in Vegas. They could just throw up some heat lamps and, and probably be okay, but we do have quite a few. They built, like, mini greenhouses, um, you know, a lot of bars, restaurants that are, like, downtown. Uh, the smaller downtown areas just have these, like, rolling tents going along uh, where people normally would park. So they've done that just because we are actually shut down. You can't even go inside a restaurant. So this is like their only opportunity they have to get anything other than carry out. So it's become more popular during even during the winter months. And, you know, Dan Gilbert, who's a a big money person around Detroit area, has built some outdoor uh, gazebos and stuff to help out restaurants because he owns like half of downtown Detroit. So that's pretty cool. And it's something that I think we'll see even as we get out of the pandemic, we'll see a lot more people realize that this is an avenue that they can expand their restaurant as long as, you know, the codes still allow it. I think we'll see a lot more of these type of things even during the cold months. Yeah, it looks really cool. Vital Vegas had a whole write up on it that we will link to so you can check out what it was like to go there. And I think it's probably a little bit better than Olive Garden. And but if that's more your speed, Olive Garden is coming to the strip. This reminds me of Times Square, right? There's an Olive Garden right in Times Square. And it's this the Olive Garden is... That's the, that's the busiest Olive Garden in the world, I believe. The, the one in Times Square is their I, busiest I think I've heard, Yeah, I think I've heard that as well. And this one will probably be right up there. It's in a very similar kind of area. It's in that uh, area where the new Target is. 
the showcase mall, which is just sort of north of MGM Grand. That feels a little Times Square-ish, that little mall. And the Target just opened up, and now we have Olive Garden. So you can go buy whatever you want at Target, then go get yourself some soup, salad, and breadsticks. Are you excited? So that's why I go to Vegas, to get some uh, Target shopping done and some, some breadsticks. <laughs> Yeah, because we don't have any good Italian restaurants on the Strip. Uh, but it's the same thing in New York, right? you got a little Italy. you got amazing places to eat. Uh, New York, of course, has several Italy's, And we have an Italy right uh, directly across the street from where Olive Garden is going. So you can actually you know, choose to go to Olive Garden or choose to eat at Italy. I suspect that a lot of Americans are going to choose Olive Garden. Uh, but that's- <laughs> yeah, they will. People like uh, you know what's familiar. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it's... Probably, you know, right up there with Times Square in terms of sales. And speaking of familiar, the Raiders are opening a new restaurant at the M, which is on the very south part of the city. We talked about the new casino that's possibly going in across the street from there and how the Raiders practice facility is right down the street from there. And we got some concept art about it. Vital Vegas, again, co- uh, covering that. So I'll, I'll put a link down below, but it's going to open in this spring. It looks really cool. Yeah, it looks really, I mean, for a sports bar, it looks high end, which, you know, isn't unheard of in a casino. A lot of high end sports type bars, but the theming looks really cool. They have a ton of Raiders stuff. So if you're a big Raiders fan, um, and I, you know, people coming from California and stuff will probably be coming for games when they have fans. So it'll be a place that they could go either stay at and check out, watch a game if you don't have tickets. So I think it'll be popular. Absolutely. And now we're going to finish with this last story and I'll let you take it away. Like this is a crazy story and one that I think is really fun to share about something left behind for a long time and then somebody finally finding it. Tell us about it. Yeah. So an author, uh, he, for some reason bought this letter Z that was like metallic looking and he stuck it underneath the park bench, like where you sit down. And every time he'd come back to Vegas, he'd go back to that park and he'd check and see if it was still there and kind of inspired him. He's like, you know, I should make like a, a treasure hunt, you know, like nationwide something. So he ended up hiding four things around the country and then wrote a book about it, which um, we'll put a link to an article in the show notes so you can get a link to the book. But um, the book's like eight dollars and eighty eight cents, I believe, on Amazon, which is probably because eight's a lucky number um, in some cultures. So he he put hints in there, and then like every thirty days on Twitter, he'll release another hint. And somebody had decoded it. They actually lived in uh, Pennsylvania, and they decoded it. But their friend lived in Vegas, and she said you have to go to the El Dorado Park in Vegas, and it should be under a bench. And she found it. So the person that decoded it got uh, nine thousand dollars, and the person that found it got a thousand dollars because you have to decode it and find it to get the full thousand. So. If you decode it, you get nine thousand. If you just happen to luckily find one of these four artifacts, you get a thousand dollars. So I thought it was kind of cool and then funny that it ended up in Vegas. Um, and there's still three available out there that you can search for. And it kind of reminds me of Ready Player One, like the hunt for ho- holidays egg, uh, that type of thing. You know, the Ready Player Two book just dropped, so it's kind of in that spirit. Um, so I thought it was something that was really cool. Yeah, and it's a good reminder that next time you're sitting on the, the punk park bench, just reach under there and see what. Grab a there. whole bunch okay. of gum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not, but yeah, of course the next one, the other three aren't going to be in Vegas, probably. Yeah, that park, I actually looked, and I actually thought it was a different park when you said El Dorado Park, but that was right down the street from my house, about five minutes away from where I used to live. So for all those years, I was driving by there, could have had a thousand thousand dollars just yeah. sitting there. Oh well, but what a cool story. And a nice little cool way to end it here. And I will enjoy the rest of my stay at Rio. I promise I'll leave a fair review when I make the video and show you all the good and bad parts of it. And I promise that this won't ruin my week. So if you want to hate me in the comments, tell me what an idiot I am because of what happened. And I you are you are an idiot for staying at Rio in the first place. But yeah, there you go. (laughs) There you go. See, if you're going to troll me, Mark trolls me harder every single day. So (laughs) it's not going to work. But anyway, Thank you so much uh, for watching and listening, for subscribing to the channel. Make sure you do a thumbs up on this video. Comments, we'd love to talk to you, let you know. We'd love to hear from you what you think about the situation, the new restaurants, and everything else we've covered here on MTM Vegas. And check out the construction video, all the new 2021 projects. I just filmed them. New video just came up uh, this week, so check that out on the channel as well. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. See you next week.